Jim, several listeners have been sending this in all morning, and Jace Nakarado just reviewed the entire 22 minutes. Hulk Hogan, <laughs> who's on a media blitz, he did Joe Rogan's podcast, Theo Vaughn's podcast. He's now on Muscle and Health Magazine's <laughs> online platform doing an interview. What, what is he pushing? Apparently, he's now involved with CBD or marijuana. So one of the things that all these guys keep getting roped into, he's now involved with. Okay. And I'm sure he'll make a fortune. But in doing this interview, some of those classic Hulk Hogan lies have been coming out, or as he may call them, my story. I'm going to play you. I'm, gonna, I'm reading the quotes here as I'm uh, talking to you. I'm going to play you this clip. Feel free to stop it at any time because it's filled with whoppers. Okay. I have not heard this yet. I'm only reading the notes, but let's go to this from Muscle and Health Magazine. You were telling me earlier, before we started rolling, yeah. you brought Simon Cowell to the United States. Well, he came, he came to help with the wrestling albums. I was, uh, long story, I'll make it short. I was in Wembley Stadium and I saw a lot of Make-A-Wish kids. It was wait, me what? and Michael. <laughs> wait, what? Oh, wait. <laughs> The question is, the question is about him claiming he brought Simon Cowell to America. Well, yes. And now we, we know that Simon Cowell was involved with the wrestling album. Not his wrestling album. You're talking about the one they did in 1992. Yes. Not, it, it wasn't Hulk Hogan's album. It was a wrestling album that Simon Cowell did in conjunction with the WWF when he was a producer, right? Right, but it wasn't, I'm not even talking about Hogan, I'm talking about it's not the original wrestling album from 1985. This was one they did in 92. Hogan wasn't involved. It was Randy Savage, Bret Hart, Tatanka, Hacksaw yeah. Duggan, the Nasty Boys. No Hogan. But, when, A, when was Hogan in Wembley Stadium? If it... If it was 90, if the Wembley Stadium show with Bulldog and Brett was 92, right? Was Hogan even there? August 92, Hulk Hogan was not booked. He was not on the roster at that time. He was not there, no. And how long has Make-A-Wish been a thing, and do they have Make-A-Wish kids in England? That I couldn't... Is, I that, mean, is that worldwide? It's worldwide, I believe, but also I think it's been going for a while. I don't think... I got to double check when it started, but I've been hearing about it for years. Okay, well, anyway, then, but yeah, Hulk didn't bring Simon, the WWF did bring Simon Cowell in as a producer on that album. But they didn't bring him to America. The album was produced in England, wasn't it? Well, yeah, you might be. I'm just talking about bringing him in to work with the WWF. That's right. Hogan said brought him to America. He brought him like, to America. Maybe, yeah. maybe it was Eddie Murphy was coming to America. Well, let's go back to this. Uh, but no, but anyway, a lot of this is, yeah, he's responsible for everything. Air, oxygen, go ahead. Jackson, Mr. T, who saw the make wish kids during the 80s and 90s. Wait, hold on, stop. Let me rewind this a few seconds. Long story, I'll make it short. I was in Wembley Stadium, and I saw a lot of make wish kids. It was me, Michael Jackson, Mr. T, who saw the make wish kids during the 80s and 90s. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> me? Michael Jackson and Mr. T saw all the Make-A-Wish kids during the 80s and 90s. At Wembley Stadium. Yeah. Uh, I'm not saying that Hogan's never seen a Make-A-Wish kid. I don't recall Michael Jackson being involved with the program. And maybe if he was, they've hushed it up since then because it might seem unseemly. Uh, but yeah, we okay. would have seen a photo of Hulk Hogan with Michael Jackson at their peak in the eighties or nineties, yeah. whatever he's talking yeah. about. At some point we would have seen it. Or I've never even seen a picture of Michael Jackson with a make a wish kid. Have you, I don't want to assume anything about these photos of Michael Jackson with kids, but let's go All back. Right, to, uh, go ahead. Let's go back to the Hulkster. I had a kid there that was in, in rough shape. He, the EMTs were with him and he was on a stretcher and, you know, his, his body odor and stuff, it had a, a <coughs> smell to it that I, I hadn't smelled in a while. Not bad, but it was just a different type of smell. And I really wasn't sure what it was, and the parents were freaking out. They were Hulkamaniacs, and I told the doctors <laughs> and the EMTs, you know, the, the kid's in kind of trouble here, you know, so let me say my goodbyes and give him a hug and kiss him. And and I got a nice place for him out at ringside at Wembley Stadium. It's all roped off, so I went to wrestle. And I kept looking, I kept looking, and the kid wasn't there. So when I came back from... The match wasn't there. You didn't work Wembley. That's what... There's been one... 
WWF event in all of history in Wembley Stadium, right? That's right. And he wasn't on it. No. And they didn't have a place roped off for a Make-A-Wish kid with bad body odor. <laughs> and why is he talking about how the kid smelled? And then he goes, I didn't say he smelled bad, but it was just a very distinct <laughs> odor. <laughs> Well, let's go back to uh, the man behind Hulkamania. Wrestling, I was the last person to wrestle the main event. I said, what happened to the family out there? And they said, oh, the kid passed away. <laughs> so when I found out the kid passed away, my manager, Jimmy Hart, the mouth of the South, he used to be in a band, too. And he had a couple of number one hit songs here. He in used to be in a band, I too, music. like I did. <laughs> hold on, hold on one second. Jimmy... <laughs> Jimmy Hart and the Gentries had not only a legitimate number one single, but a legitimate recording career for a few years, which is way, way, way past the level that Hulk Hogan has ever reached in music in his wildest dreams, for fuck's sake. And now he's like, yeah, my manager, Jimmy, he had a few songs, too. Good Lord. Music before. So we stayed up all night and we wrote 12 songs for the kids' family. Oh and I didn't God. know anybody in the UK. And Jimmy um, knew somebody from Select Records. And he, they got a home of hold of Simon Cowell. He produced a little album for us. And it went number one on Billboard for eight weeks. And we gave... What? <laughs> Wait, what? Wait, what? <laughs> oh, my God. How, how the fuck did we miss an album... With a collaboration between Hulk Hogan and Jimmy Hart going number one on the Billboard charts for eight weeks. Eight weeks. See, that's the thing. It's like he says these things that are just incredible lies, but then he gives you weird detail to the lie that's a bigger lie, and it just makes you question your own existence. <laughs> <laughs> he's saying it. I mean, he's, he believes his own shit, it seems like. Or something's going on. But let's go back to the whole. What were we going to say? I would just, it, it's something's going on. It's like he just tosses it off casually like it. Yes, and then the green space alien took me uh, around to Poughkeepsie in his alien ship for fucking uh, dinner at the diner. See, like even like the story about the Make-A-Wish kid, if he had said me and Mr. T were at Wembley, then you could be like, okay, look, he took a lot of bumps. Maybe he means the garden. But then when he's like, me, Mr. T, Michael Jackson, we're all hanging out at Wembley Stadium. We used to see all the, all the Make-A-Wish kids in the 80s. We'd all get together once a month and go find all the sick kids. Michael would stay longer than us. We didn't know what was going on. Hey! Let's go back to Hulkamania, or, well, Hulk Hogan himself. He produced a little album for us, and it went number one on Billboard for eight weeks, and we gave, donated the money to the family. Oh, good And then God. Simon came back to me and said so we need to do the song with a band called Green Jelly over in the UK. And something called Leader of the Gang, a G Gary Glitter song. And so that did really well on Billboard too. What? So when I came back to the States, I had the crazy idea since I was wrestling, maybe we should do music here. So I grabbed Cindy Lauper and Rick <laughs> oh, Derringer good God. and a bunch of people and we recut a bunch of songs. Land of a Thousand yeah, Dances. Wait, wait a minute, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Now he's going back from the album that Simon Cowell was on back to the original wrestling album, right? That's right. He just went from Cindy 19... Lauper, a.k.a. Mona Flambe, 1992 to 1985. That's right. And he's the one who talked Cindy Lauper into not because she liked Captain Lou Albano, who she watched growing up on TV and met sitting on the airplane, but Hulk Hogan. And, hey, Cindy Lauper, come on over. Let's make some music. And Rick Derringer. He also got Rick Derringer involved. Well, sure he did. Let's go back to Hulk Hogan. Billboard, too. So when I came back to the States, I had the crazy idea since I was wrestling, maybe we should do music here. So I grabbed Cindy Lauper and Rick Derringer <laughs> and a bunch of people, and we recut a bunch of songs, Land of a Thousand Dances and stuff, and Simon came over and helped produce the wrestling album. Then he came and produced the second wrestling album, Power Driver, and he never left. He stayed here and he became... The that, that's absolutely not what happened in any way. Besides that, doesn't he still live in England? I mean, he may have a home in Beverly Hills or something, but he, I think, still has a residence in England. But he didn't come over here to stay after producing the Piledriver album. Oh, he had nothing to do with that album or the one before it. But he's, is this the true definition of a, of a sociopath that he just tosses this stuff off so 
matter-of-factly and casually that's completely and utterly fictitious bullshit. Do these qualities make someone a good professional wrestler? Well, you know, yes, but only if you, the individual involved, knows where they have departed from reality. And I'm not sure that that's obvious here that he does. Either that or he's just thinking, well, these people are complete idiots because I didn't even do research on how to lie about this well. I'm going back in time. I'm conflating incidents. I'm, you know, he's not even doing great prep work where you would have to really do some serious digging to disprove it. Once again, this is Muscle and Health Magazine asking about Hulk Hogan bringing Simon Cowell to America. Let's go back to this. This monster producer and nicest guy in the world. He plays a tough guy on TV, but he's a real sweetheart. Yeah? In person, he's a really nice guy, so oh, you know, it's, what... just, it's amazing because I watch him on America's Got Talent, you know? So it's all a pantomime, is it? Well, he's doing the, the character, you know, he's doing the... Hulk doesn't know what pantomime means. <laughs> you can't hit him with that <laughs> fucking word. <laughs> Simon Cowell up there, you know, with the stern face, but in real life, he's a real sweetheart. The irony, because they say wrestling's a pantomime. It's clearly not with the number of injuries you've incurred. But... Well, nobody gave me the memo that it was fake. They forgot to tell me. Well, you know? yeah, I mean, you can see. <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> so, Simon, are you still friends with him? Yes, yes. Yeah, well, you <laughs> yeah, of course. Bring no. him over here. I mean... Well, I think he credits the whole wrestling business, really, because he came and help produce these albums for the whole wrestling company, but we started with him over in the UK with our little stuff first, and then we brought him over for the, the WWE Their album. little stuff that and, nobody's uh, heard ever. What does Jimmy Hart think? Oh, uh, Jimmy is so nice and kind, and uh, he just he, he just nods his head, I guess. <laughs> whatever, whatever you say, poo-poo. Well, again, there's other things here. A lot of them are related to his new CBD product and various injuries and his health. Uh, hold on, there's one other clip here that Jay said uh, he recommends we play. Let me go to this. Here is Hulk Hogan with Muscle and Health Magazine. So you're here at Hogan's Hangout every Monday night. Like, you haven't just developed a place and then left it in your name. You actually come here, you meet your fans, you meet your yeah. regulars, even the crazy ones. I just absolutely love that, that's so cool. And you're doing that despite all the other stuff that you're doing. What about your music? Have you got any more plans to do any more music? You know, right now I don't. Um, my daughter Brooke still messes with music up in Nashville. That worked and out. every once in a while she'll come by the house and we'll talk about music or she'll have a chord progression or something I'll work through with her or pick up the bass and play a bass line that she needs it or whatever. But it's nothing, nothing important anymore. It's just fun, you know? And, Plus, my hands and everything's been broken and Oh, let up. me see that. Those are, those are like teeth marks. Can I touch <laughs> that? Ooh. Yeah, they're all around She's my touching thumb his hand. Bit. She's a bit over the top. But yeah, she's touching his hand and he's a... Uh, he, I don't even think he knows how to react to her, to be quite honest with you. No, wow. just different things. So wrestling was different in the 70s than it is now. Yes, I'm so, sure it was. A little, a little crazier back then, you know. Ah, uh, well, Hulk, listen, thank you so much for chatting yeah. to me. You're just awesome. I want to move here. I want well, to it's see a nice place to live. You know, we, we do a lot of partying on the beach, so you got to be ready to run with us around here. I feel as if maybe I'm more ready to run with you than Rick for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> Rick. Rick would be hard to keep up with. Uh, yeah, definitely. Rick and Mike are like a little bit out of my league. Yeah. Uh, what about what about Ron Howard? <laughs> yeah, he's not in this, unfortunately, but she's talking about Ric Flair, apparently, and Mike Tyson. They're somehow roped into all this CBD stuff or <laughs> THC stuff, too. But we're going to end it there. There's 22 minutes of Hogan talking whatever nonsense he has. as other interviews he's done. What do you think? I mean, what do you... From hearing him make stuff up because i can't imagine he's thought this stuff out i think it's just coming out as he's saying it what do you think of all this i think you know it it might be like you said that he just when they mention a name he just concocts on the fly some involvement he had with them how he was in charge of something that they played along with that's kind of the mo no matter who 
the personality is throughout history that is brought up to Hulk Hogan or the situation somehow, at some point in his life, he was in charge of it or the instigator or originator of it. And it's kind of, you know, maybe it's like Terry Funk's talent for working in the ring. He's just got a talent for bullshitting as soon as the, the topic is raised. And, and he sounds so genuine and convinced that that was true. Wasn't that actually a story years ago that Terry Funk, even though they got along, and again, he's the one who got Stallone or hooked Stallone up with the idea of Hulk Hogan, that Terry confronted him in Japan because Hogan did an interview with the Japanese press where he said he beat Terry Funk somewhere. And Terry, like, saw him out one night and confronted him <laughs> I, over it. Did you ever hear that? I, I seem to remember something like that. God, we got somebody out there chase down the details for us. That's right. Well, perhaps you are someone who, <laughs> who likes the truth. Perhaps you don't know what to do about Hulk Hogan just making up these stories. Perhaps you're Simon Cowell and you don't think it's fair that this guy's saying he's your best friend. You may want to sue. Slander. That's what St Simon Cowell would uh, would say. He's been slandered because he was not Hulk Hogan's lackey and errand boy here, that he's a successful man on his own. And if that's the case, then I suggest that he should call this man to get even in open court. Call Stephen P. Of the rest. And maybe if we can ever find that family from Wembley Stadium that left in intermission because their sick kid with body odor died in the middle of the show while Hogan was wrestling, <laughs> they might want to sue as well for Hulk Hogan slandering and maligning the kid to say he, he stunk. I kept looking sake. over. I kept looking over. I thought they just went to the concession stand. <laughs> yeah. I thought I'd see him coming back with some hot dogs. <laughs> Well, whoever you want to sue, the man for you is Stephen P. New. And I'll tell you what, though, I've talked to Stephen P. New recently, and he has been so busy. He's suing the governor of the state of West Virginia for $300 million on behalf of the inmates of the state's penal institutions, prisons, and jails, which are woefully overcrowded and hopelessly in disrepair. He is still pressing the opioid litigation on behalf of the opioid addicted babies that were born. He's got all kinds of things going on all over the country. And as a result, he has actually had to defer and or turn down cases brought to him and or refer to other people cases brought to him, but he's looking forward to bringing close to some of these things, moving on to some of the next chapters and getting back to helping some of the cult of cornet listeners but you too can get uh, your name in the pot and at the very least get some erstwhile advice if not some referral and or some help by calling stephen p new at newlawoffice.com 888-692-8084 that's what you can do brian that's what you can do I certainly can, and I certainly will, and we'll have an update on Cast Media and Colin Thompson and Live One and Podcast One and Rob Ellen on the next episode.